Ben, it's a pleasure uh, and a privilege. Well, it's definitely a privilege and partly a pleasure to be standing here today. But it is definitely a pleasure and a privilege to be sharing this space with the players of the Ulster Orchestra and with the children of Crescendo from Malvern Primary School. Their school's closed today to be a polling station in the EU elections, so they have come here in their own time to help me with this talk. And I would like you to give them a big, big round of applause for doing that today. I uh, want to pose a question to you. How do you transform the lives of an entire generation of children and young people? I'm part of the last generation on the Shankill who did not need a single educational qualification, not a senior or junior certificate. I'm looking around the room to see if anybody would recognize those. Not a GCSE, never mind five and A to C grades in maths and English. None of those were needed in my generation because our pathway, born in the 1950s, was the last generation whose pathway was a given. It was a given in the linen mills, it was a given in the shipyard, it was a given in Mackey's engineering. The saying was that your education started with your apprenticeship. It was in the late 60s, early 70s, that what we now call the perfect storm blew up in the Shankill. And those old industries collapsed. The process of redevelopment stripped down and hollowed out our community reducing its population from 76,000 to 26,000 people in a 15-year period. And then the Shankill became at the epicenter of the Northern Ireland conflict. That perfect storm resulted not so much in shipyards, but for our community in a shipwreck. And from that shipwreck, we have since then, and it's 50 years ago, since then and over the last 50 years, had three generations of children and young people, all but washed up on the beach from that shipwreck. And they have nothing to chart their way forward except the detritus of the shipwreck. They have only those tools and equipment that they can put together from that to take their lives forward. Four years ago, the Shankill community designated itself as a children and young people zone. It did so to attempt to chart a way forward for 5,968 children and young people in this generation at present, some of them here today. And in doing so, it was saying that their future, this generation's future, the transformation of this generation is a top priority for our community. The idea was predicated around the notion that if you have a fierce concentration of a problem, an education, a health, and an economic deficit of great depth, if you have a fierce concentration of a problem in a place, which in our instance was Shankill, then if you get a fierce concentration on the solution, you have a chance to do something about it. And so this zone that we created, which is at once a framework, which is also a space for things to happen and, and, and develop in, and which is also a crucible to bring better together the different elements which can affect the transformation of this generation of children and young people. This zone has brought together a range of partners within our community, the schools, the church-based groups, the youth clubs, the football teams, the dance groups. It has brought the community organizations within the community together around a table, a figurative table. It has also brought bigger partners in with us. The Vice-Chancellor of Queen's, the, the late Paddy Johnson, opened the door of Queen's University us to be a partner, the first partner in our journey in the zone. PwC, the Ulster Orchestra who are here today, the University of Ulster who have a framework agreement in their new campus to be relevant to neighbouring communities. These people and others have become partners with us in that journey. But it is one thing getting the right people around the table, and we have, it is another thing finding out what the right thing to do. Because over the last 20 years or more, there have been dozens of initiatives trying to address 
this deficit. And the depth of the deficit has been such that it has been immune to those initiatives. And so we had a moment of realization of all the work that we have done in the community over a long period of time, working with families, working with children and young people. We had never, not once, come across a family with a young child, and particular, um, particularly a mother with a newborn child. We have never come across one, however difficult their circumstances, and sometimes it's extremely difficult, However difficult those circumstances, we have never come across one who did not want something better for their child. And that moment of realization for us was this. If we can find out what that something better is in that family, or if the children are older or they're young people from them themselves, the story they want their life to be, then that is the starting point. Because that's their outcome. That's the change that they want. Not the government's outcome for them, not some agency's outcome. It's their outcome. And how do we find that out? Very simple. We talk to them. And so we have started a process of conversations with children and young people, with their families if they're very young, about the story they want their life to be. We have trained what we call pathfinders in the art and science of those conversations who are listening, who are discovering, who are exploring, who are documenting, and then Queen's University Centre for Evidence of Social Innovation analysing these conversations. And having had the conversations with each child, then we plan a pathway forward with them. Government call it co-design these days. And having designed that pathway as they take the first steps in that, the children's zone begins to put sustained support around them, one child at a time, for as long as it takes. With that support coming from the range of partners and in the, in the area that are working with us. And on that journey forward, we believe that as it builds up into a critical mass, we will find that it develops into an, outwork, an outcomes framework right across the community of Shankill, which will have the energy to regenerate the community itself. We're on the early steps of that journey. We're in the foothills of that journey. We don't have a blueprint to say drop that into every community that suffers the same problems, and we do have many. But we do have certain values and principles that need adhered to. First of all, it begins with the child. It begins with the individual child. And our commitment, commitment the children understand it as a promise from us, our promise to them, is to stay with them one at a time for as long as it takes on that journey with sustained support, sometimes light touch, sometimes intensive. The second important thing that holds with this is that there is no easy fix. This is a long journey. This is a generation to change a generation. It will be a 20 to 25 year journey. There are no quick fixes in this. It also starts with the outcomes that belong to the children and young people. Not someone else's outcomes for them, but their outcomes. And finally, finally, it is a journey of exploration. We're in the foothills of it. We are learning. We are exploring. This is an emergent situation. It will always be under development. But we believe that down the line, as we progress and climb this mountain towards the top of the 5,968 children and young people who are out there in our community, we believe that this is something that is a right. This is justice for this generation of children and young people. This is about creating a society in Northern Ireland that we ought to create. This is even about building the peace. I started by saying that I was delighted that Malvern Primary School uh, Crescendo Group had joined us. Malvern has become like a micro zone within our children's zone. We have, it has been adopted by PwC, uh, the only school that they have done that with for the first time. We have the Ulster Orchestra working in the school from P1, taking the children right through their seven years of experience in primary school around musical development. 
We have the Centre for Evidence of Social Innovation in Queen's University who are measuring the impact of this and the impact it will have not only on musical development but on behaviour, on concentration and on the well-being of the child. So Malvern has become like a microcosm of our zone and today we wanted you to hear from them and from the excellent Jonathan who leads this uh, to, to, to hear from them as they play as a living example of the change and the journey that we are on. Thank you, Jonathan. If I could just finally say this, I don't know if it will ring bells with you, but in government terms and the deprivation indicators, uh, where Malvern Primary School is in Lower Shankles, known as Shankles Super Output Area 2, it's pretty well at the bottom of the list of super output areas. I call it now super outcome areas, I think, for Shankle 2. And I want to say this finally very, very quickly. I mentioned that we had made promises to the children to be with them for as long as it takes. Promises to these 11 children here and to the, five, the, the rest of the 5,968. And just to, to borrow uh, three lines from the Robert Frost poem, we have promises to keep, miles to go before we sleep, and miles to go before we sleep. Thank you all very much indeed.